name's Alan Prost, and I'm going to describe for you the mode of pressure-regulated volume control. Now, in our classification system, this is often referred to as pressure control, CMV, adaptive, or pressure-regulated volume control. So, in our classification system, it's a pressure-controlled breath. CMV is the breath type, so every breath will be assisted by the ventilator, but it's adaptive to the changes in my patient's lung care. So let me explain how this works. The mode of pressure regulated volume control, or PC, CMV, works just like all pressure control modes in that it sets a pressure control level. The difference is, is that this mode is adaptive to changes in my patient's lung characteristics. So in my controls, I set a volume target, pressure regulated volume control. I set a volume target. Now, the ventilator will adjust the pressure control level to meet that volume target. So it measures the patient's lung compliance and determines the amount of pressure control required to achieve that tidal volume. So it's adapted to changes in my patient. As my patient's lung compliance decreases or the lungs get stiffer, the ventilator, over a minute or so, will measure that change in compliance and increase the pressure control level to meet my volume target. All other elements of the, of the mandatory breath are similar to pressure control. I've got a set pressure control. The flow starts high, declines, and it's time cycled. So in this case, this particular mode, I'm being time triggered because I've set the rate, 12 breaths per minute. My patient's not breathing. So every five seconds, the ventilator will deliver my pressure control breath. Because it's pressure control, it's pressure limited and time cycled to my baseline pressures. The adaptive element comes in as my patient's compliance changes. In this case, I'm going to have improved compliance or increased compliance. So initially, the ventilator will give a little bit larger volumes than I want until it gets a chance to measure the compliance of the lung, that change in compliance, and then it will lower the pressure control limit to achieve my desired tidal volume that I've established on the ventilator. So it's adaptive to changes in my patient's compliance and resistance. Mostly compliance. Resistance, the majority of that is due to the endotracheal tube, and that doesn't change. So, let's take a look at the controls of how, and the waveforms and how this works. So here I have the Avita Drager ventilator set up in the mode of pressure regulated, volume control, or in our nomenclature it's known as pressure PC CMV adaptive. So the controls I set up of course are the FIO2, tidal volume, but here it's time cycled. You notice it's got a TI established. I've got my rate set at 12. I've got something about we'll learn about later which is the ramp feature and my baseline pressures of 5. It looks like regular pressure control in that the ventilator is time triggered, pressure limited, and time cycled. We look over here on my test lung, you can see we've got a passive humidification circuit. We're going down here to measure both the pressures um, in the circuit itself or at the mouth and at the distal end of the endotracheal tube, the alveolar pressures. The endotracheal tube is established by this little resistor right here. Here's my patient's compliance. Now if we go up here and we look on our waveform measurements here, we see that the mouth pressures are in red and the alveolar pressures are in white. Just like a regular pressure control breath, we see that as the breath is time triggered on, the pressure in the circuit builds up and mouth and alveolar pressures become equal. The flow rate initially delivered by the ventilator is quite high and decelerates due to our time constant until we get an inspiratory plateau and then into exhalation. So let's take a close look at those breaths. Pressure limited, we get equilibrium between alveolar and mouth pressures, and then exhalation.